Hey guys, welcome back to another live stream here at Palmer Aquatics. I have a new camera, so I'm hoping everything goes smooth. I'm trying to upgrade the channel a little bit with some higher quality. Let me know if it looks clear in the chat. Today's video is going to be specifically aimed at cloudy aquarium water and how you fix it. So I'm gonna bring up the chat here. Um, I always get messages regarding cloudy water and that's kind of what is bringing on the video here. I know William sent me a message not too long ago about his cloudy water and William, this isn't directed at the fact that you asked me this question. I always get it, so don't feel bad. Uh, let me bring up the chat here. Hopefully you guys can't hear my daughter screaming upstairs. I'm guessing uh, my wife's giving her a bath and uh, when she gets out of the bath, she just goes bananas and runs around the house butt naked. It, it's her thing, but my wife chases her so that she doesn't pee all over the floor because that's happened a dozen times already. And yeah. All right, so let's bring up this chat. But yeah, clearing up aquarium water. Uh, first of all, what what my go through process is, first of all, I uh, I first personally prefer the person asking me the question to send me a picture of their tank setup because a lot of times a picture can answer a lot more than just sitting there and texting and I, I absolutely go bananas when people are messaging me, messaging me all the time and I can't like, I want to help them so bad but I can't see their tank and I can't, you know what I mean? like. So if in the future, if you ever message me, be ready to send me some pictures because it drives me bananas. All right, so checking out the chat here, we're gonna see who's here. And by the way, guys, I apologize. I haven't been live streaming as much as I wanted to be. Uh, I just upgraded the camera and um, it's just, uh, it, it's crazy getting everything going. But now that I have the camera all smoothly set up, this, sh this should be going great. I wanna check um, the quality here. Let me know what your quality is quality 720 yeah see even though this is a 4k camera it's still at 720 hopefully it looks better all right i'm gonna quit blabbing let's check out the chat bug gus is here hunter's here guess i should move to my computer he says matt's fish keeping how's it going happy toast what's up regan is here just started up a 55 gallon tank and it's very cloudy okay well this is perfect regan you're gonna have to try to stay in touch uh, in the chat with me because I'm going to use you personally as a example right now because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pick you with questions. So you're going to be our experiment essentially and don't feel bad. Uh, hopefully you can play along with it. Michigan Aquatics is live. Ah, I feel bad. That sucks. All right. Aqua Ball says, hello everyone. Happy new year. My new year's resolution is to live stream way more so i should probably set a goal to do like maybe like two or three a week um but, but yeah that's my goal to do a lot more of it i don't have a specific parameters at how often but anyways all right so regan tell us about your tank setup and what filter actually i'm going to i have a list of what i go through when people ask me this so i'm going to walk you through it as well and i'm really happy you're here and have this issue right now all right first of all uh, number one, I number one thing I ask: Have you tested your water? And I know a lot of people hate this question. And um, in in the in the Facebook groups, you see a lot of this. Everyone says my water's fine, and it's because it's. Uh, I understand testing water is super annoying, and it's it's kind of complex, and a lot of us don't want to screw around with it. And um, it's completely fine if you haven't tested your water, so don't feel bad. Or if you don't even have a test kit because it's really, really, that is the reality of it. Um, and a lot of people tell me, oh, I don't have test kits, I don't test, I've been keeping water for year, years, or keeping fish for years, and it's completely fine. All right, Hunter says, meh, I know people who got engaged at 15, laugh out loud. All right, so let me know if you have tested your water and it's completely fine if you haven't. Uh, let's Actually, let's just pretend like you haven't tested your water because you don't have a test kit. and. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say by stating that you should buy a test kit. And a lot of people say, I don't want the complexity of it. Second, I, I will rebuttal that you, 
uh, you can buy Tetra test strips that are extremely easy and they're not complicated, essentially. Lisa's Aquatic says, what's up, Palmer? How's it going, Lisa? All right, Regan replied, I have a test kit, but only tested on my 20 gallons since there are fish in that one. It didn't work the best. Yeah, and a lot of people don't feel confident that they're doing it properly, and there's just a lot of variables. So I guess we'll just move on as you haven't tested it, and I, I, I just like to start with that. So number my next question is, uh, is this a new tank setup? Because this, this is a huge problem in the industry. Uh, new tank setups usually mean that they have the cycling process is pretty complicated and something just hasn't gone right um, and sometimes uh, even even after a tank has fully cycled and you have fish in it like two weeks later it goes through kind of like that or even a week later it goes through that cloudy stage and you almost have to just like you, you get kind of you get stressed out because it's like, should I do 50% water changes every single day? Should I do a 100% water change? Should I, you know, like, or, and actually what I like to do is, cause if I use a test kit, which is the safe route to go, if it tests fine, you leave it. And a lot of people should just know a lot of times after, sometimes there's that light cloudy phase where you just have to leave it. And it kind of, it, it's, it's hard to do, but sometimes you have to do it. Parrot Aquatics says, how do I become a mod? Um, I will I will add you after. I've noticed you always hear Parrot. So, and we're getting a lot of mods, um, just so people know in the future, there's going to be a cutoff soon, just because I don't need a million mods. And I know it's a cool, it's a cool feeling to be a mod. Aqua Ball says, I just set up a new aquascape and the first day was cloudy. Then I changed the water more than half and now it's much better. And tomorrow I'm going to change it again and, and I'm using RO water. Yes, um, a lot of times water changes will fix it. And I, I just advise if you have fish in the tank, only do 50% water changes. And most of the time when people reach out to me and they're saying my tank is cloudy, I would say 60 to 70% of the time, it's just complete utter beginners that have no idea that they even need to tank. They need to change the water. And I'm like, you had no idea about this. You need to change like an amount of water every so often. And it just you let a month go by and your tank is just, you need to change the water. And they're like, I, I need to change the water in my aquarium. I'm like, Ugh. it just, it drives me bonkers, but it's a huge myth. People don't know in this industry. And even my friend just got a tank set up like a, a corner 70 gallon tank. And he's like, it's all filled with water. We'll be good. And I'm like, no, you need to change it every month. Like at least every month, if you have like plants and etc. he's like, I have to change water. I was like, bro, like, come on. And it's funny because like he claims that he follows my YouTube channel and it's just, ugh. all right. So moving on, uh, if it's a new tank, uh, maybe you screwed up the cycle. A lot of times if people are unsure what I tell them to do, uh, and some people may disagree. I tell them to go to the fish store, your local fish store and buy a used sponge filter and make sure it's used and in their tank. It's been in there for over a month and some fish stores get weird, but from my experience, they have, for the most part, been completely cool. If you tell them you're gonna jumpstart your cycle in your tank and you're having issues, they should completely understand. If they don't let you buy one, that is stupid. Like, if you fail at keeping your fish aquarium and all your fish die, you're gonna drop the hobby and they're not gonna make any more money. So tell them that, I don't know, it's, um, and what you do by throwing an established sponge filter in your tank, in your tank is you're, this is holding your, your beneficial bacteria and holding together your cycle in an established tank, essentially. And when you throw it in your new tank to where you're, you have no idea if your cycle's good or not, then it basically jump starts it. And it, this, is, this is filtering your water. And within time, the beneficial bacteria are getting into your system. And, it, and it, it, it's a great thing. I highly advise people, like, don't even screw around with that whole cycling process. Go to your fish store and buy a used um, sponge filter, or if you're local to me, I will, I will, I will give you some used filter pad. You can also do that. <sighs> All right. I gotta take a deep breath. Jump in the chat here. Happy new year. Happy new year. Wicked tanks, in North Carolina, or is that what NC stands for? I'm not sure. Joe Black says, Hey Palmer, you're awesome. Thank you. So Hunter, I mean, to be fair, I'm 75% sure I frequently mess up and drop one or two of the tests. I'm not sure what you mean on that Hunter. I'm guessing you're talking to someone else. All right, happy toast. You should try using AquaClear. 
Happy Toast says, I have a 30 gallon for like five months and it's super foggy and it's a green tint. There are plants if that matters. Um, if you're growing algae, most for the most part, your water should be, your cycle should be good to go. And they, they say that once you start growing algae, that is a beautiful thing to actually see. And a lot of people hate it, but it actually means you're, you have a fully established cycle and your tank is good to go. And maybe you just wanna work on doing water changes from there on out aqua balls. I'm not sure. I'm sure you'll get it figured out. You're a smart person. All right, so William says, I bought the kit today. Hopefully no more brown water and hopefully William, you, you saw earlier, um, I'm not doing this video like targeting you or anything. I always get this message and I think it's a good topic to talk about because a lot of people think that because you have aquarium, if, you're, if your water's cloudy, a lot of them think that, you know, you can just throw a, fil a certain filter pad on your filter and it's gonna fix everything because that's not really how it works. And sometimes uh, this, the polishing pad does work, but that's only if you know, the biological side of your water is good to go and you're only needing to filtrate the mechanical side. And a lot of times it, it won't be cloudy. It'll be like, you'll see like tiny little particulates and that's where the polishing comes in. If it's extremely cloudy and kind of like, like smoggy fog, I, this is a weird thing to talk about, but that's where the parameters, something's funky. And that's where water changes need to come into play. Your cycling probably could uh, not be proper. All right. Dope Aquarium says, where's Jimmy? Lisa's Fishbowl Life. I would just keep doing water changes. My tanks started getting a lot of green algae and more water changes really helped. I agree, Lisa. That's usually what I do as well. And as long as you're sure your cycle is uh, if you have some established media and you're sure that things are good to go, what I'll do is I'll do a 50% water change on a daily basis until it kind of clears up. But sometimes there's just that, what's known as the new tank syndrome, and it's just gonna pass with time. But if you have it, if you've, um, in this case, this is another case, William, in his case, his, his, his tank, I gotta slow down. His tank had been running for over a year, I believe, but then his tank got cloudy. So then that means it's probably water parameters. And, uh, you know, I, in the first questions I asked him more, are you cleaning your gravel well enough? Because that is, that is huge and that is key. A lot of people don't clean their gravel well enough. Get that gravel vac in there real deep. Make sure you're, you're cleaning everything out. And the second thing I told him was, do you have in, or I, I asked him essentially, I should say. I asked him if he had any decorations that were hollow. And a lot of the the, the uh, decor you get at the big chain stores are hollow and uh, things get stuck in there. Sometimes a small fish will, will, will swim in there, it'll die, and it'll essentially rot and wreck your water parameters. And a lot of times, if, if, it, if, I, come into, if I come into this fish room and I see that uh, a tank is kind of cloudy, I immediately look for a dead fish because that is the first sign. And a lot of times you will, you know, a dead fish or something is, is, is decaying at a rapid pace. That is going to cloud your water, obviously. So make sure you take, take out all your decor, rinse it. I've had decor, like fish poop build up in the decor so bad that you're like emptying this hollow decor and it's like ridiculous and it'll blow your mind what's stuck in there. All right, we got a super chat from Lime Boy Fish. Thank you. Uh, there's no question, but thank you, sir. <sighs> Guys, I'm worked up. I'm, I got a new camera and I'm just jacked to do videos. I just uh, released a video on SRD flower horns. Maybe you guys saw that or not. I'm gonna do a bunch of live streams tonight and probably tomorrow. I got the Mountain Dew raging in my veins. Um, still got some of the, the Merry mashup. I love this stuff, it's a good mix. If you're not a Mountain Dew fan, sorry. All right, let's hit up the chat here a little bit more. Aquaball says, every time I put wood in an aquascape, it causes algae and fungus on the wood. Yes, that is very common. I have that same problem, Aquaballs, and I think it's because there's, there's like a bacteria gelatin like fungus that grows on real wood and it takes some time probably like six months to a year to kind of just like get rid of that and a lot of times what i will do is i have some common plecos 
I know I preach to not buy them for your smaller tanks, but what I will do, I've talked about this in the past, I will take some of my common plecos and I will move them around in tanks that need cleaning. And specifically aqua balls, I'm talking about that driftwood because the real wood grows that fungus and it looks hideous on the eyes. And that's where the common plecos come in. I keep them in there for a week. I get them the heck out because, and then I switch them to the next tank that needs a deep cleansing because they are an utter complete mess. <clears throat> Anthony's fishy friend says, what's up, Chris? You look super clean shaven, bro. Yeah, I actually, uh, new camera, fresh shave. Um, I shouldn't even, it's not even a razor shape. It's just, um, I'm hoping that this new camera looks a lot sharper and there's a new light. I just, I whipped up a DIY light on that tank. There's a bunch of Africans in there. It looks extremely ugly and it's not the most ideal African cichlid tank, but um, all these tanks right now are pretty much, uh, it's, it's a short term thing because I'm setting up all the tanks out in the store. <sighs> okay, Paired Aquatics says, do you believe water conditioner makes a difference? I use cheaper one and it make my tank really cloudy. Um, that's, that's a very good question. I've always stuck with the Seachem products and I know a lot of my friends where I um, do maintenance on their tanks, they buy a lot of the cheaper quality water conditioners and I have a buttload of them. Tetra makes them, all the brands make water conditioners. And the reason I, the, I, I, I know I don't like to hype up certain brands, but the Prime is a extremely good product. Everybody raves about it, but it, it's because it does an amazing job. And there's a, just so people know that a lot of water conditioners, once once that bottle's cracked, there's only a one year lifespan on that product. And that's a lot, that's a lot of people don't know this, but that bacteria actually like things happen to it. I'm not, it's probably less effective. It, it'll probably still work, but uh, I've been, a, I've heard a lot of experienced fish keepers talk about that and it was news to me. So, and a lot of people are claiming Prime is awesome when a product is just like owns the industry and it's but they do a very good job and if you want to save a little more money when it comes to buying prime you can buy a product made by Seachem that's called safe and you it gets a lot more for the for the bang of your dollar essentially and it comes in a powdered form and instead of liquid i'm guessing the lifespan is a lot longer so <sighs> anthony's fishy friend says i do way too many water changes i use safe yes i'm i'm fortunate i'm on well water so i don't use anything but Sometimes if things get funky in some of my tanks, I keep Prime on hand because it detoxifies a lot of different bad things in the water and it's it's just a helpful tool to have in your arsenal. So, Luke Vlogs and Gaming says, my male and female Oscars are lip locking and shaking. Are they breeding? Um, when you say lip locking and shaking, that's probably on the more aggression. So I would say, you're either, you know, there's tons of videos on this. Maybe look up some of my videos. Um, you're either gonna have to add more hiding places, more fish, more, more, or I should say other more aggressive fish that are gonna kind of like take their, take all their attention off of each other, or you can add a lot more decor. All right, William had a question here. I want to check out. Can brown water affect my fish in a bad way? Should I ever worry if anything seems okay? Yeah, William, this kind of goes back, um, you know, you could either, I could either ask 30 questions or talk about 30 different topics on different, you know, like cloudy water, brown water, um, but really it all boils down to testing. And it's, I know it sucks. You said you ordered a test kit. You're on the right path. If, if I, some people tell me that they're too expensive, um, that drives me bananas kind of because, uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to go down that wormhole, but instead let's say buy some Tetra test strips. Those are a lot cheaper. They're easy as heck. And they've, they've been tested to be almost as effective as a water, uh, a liquid testing kit essentially. And, uh, I know that you did say that William, that the testing kits are expensive in your area. Um, that, that could be true. I know it kind of sucks because it's, it's like you're, you're buying you, the money you want to put into your tank you want to put towards cool fish and cool plants into core. You don't want to throw it at something as stupid as like, 
essentially a chemical. I understand it. Like when I used to really be into cars as a young juvenile lad, essentially, it would, uh, you know, like instead of fixing my car, like the brakes would be bad. But I'm like, I don't want to buy the brakes. I want to I want to buy a subwoofer, you know, like that's way cooler. And it's essentially sort of like that. But you need the test, the test kit in your arsenal. You know what I mean? And my wife would always complain. We'd be driving around in this Honda Civic beater. And I'm like, yeah, it's so cool. Look at my spoiler. And she's like, yeah, but your gas gauge doesn't work. And I'm like, gas gauge like you don't need that. I always remember those days. All right, let's check out the chat. I'm super behind. All right, Aquaball says, I am testing the water right now while, while we're speaking off the new Aquascape off, using the API test kit. Yeah, the API test kit is probably one of the best. I would highly advise. I'll throw a link in the description box to the API test kit. Now that I think of it. All right, so what other things do I have written down to talk about? Um, cloudy water. I have, have you gravel vacked good enough? How many fish are in your tank? And um, sometimes people have like overstocking. You have an Oscar fish in a 29 gallon tank. Uh, that's really common. Or they have a full size um, cichlid in a 55. Or they have goldfish in a 20 gallon tank. Um, you know, the bio load, I always tell people to keep up with goldfish. And like a four or five inch goldfish in a 20 gallon tank, you're not to be doing water changes every single day. And people were like, what? I had a fishbowl growing up and we didn't, we didn't even change the water. And I'm like, deep breaths, Chris, deep breaths. All right. I hear brown water is very healthy on aquariums. Actually, aqua balls, green water is what you're thinking of. Green water is absolutely extraordinary, super beneficial to the fish because green water, it's, it's, it's many algae particular particulates everywhere in the water, essentially. And it's feeding on nitrates. And it just works like live plants, except your fish are covered. It's, it's, it's everywhere. It's super effective and it gives the fish security because it has a, a lot of coverage. Like when you go to really, if you've ever traveled to really clear ocean water or lakes, if the water is super clear, you're not going to see a fish. And that's because they're hiding because they know it's super clear. But whereas, green water in tanks it gives them that security and like lucas brett's he breeds a lot of his fish in green water and that's why outdoor tubs do so well because that green water is absolutely extraordinary for the fish and a lot of people haven't talked about this Corey talks about this which is super cool he wants to do like some experimenting and talk about how he's finding cases where green water is curing sick fish so I don't know, I think that's really cool to think about, so. All right, Alberto says, Chris, I can't wait till you get like a 500 gallon aquarium with monsters, South American Central Cichlids. Yes, this summer it's going down and that this summer I'm gonna have big tanks filled with water out in the shop. I promise you guys it's going to be extraordinary. I have the 450, I have the 500 gallon plywood tank and I, I want a, I, I know I've talked a lot about this, but I need a, a, a short tank that's long for stingrays, essentially. And a lot of you monster fish keepers know the struggle. I don't want a pond. I've bashed ponds. I didn't bash ponds. A lot of people are trolling me and saying, you bash ponds, but you had Matt's monster fish on your channel, and he, he keeps ponds. I don't, I'm not bashing ponds, man. That's a lot of water to keep awesome fish. I'm just, my preference is I want a tank. I want a pane of glass to be able to see it. <sighs> don't get me started, people. Just kidding. Are you ever going to do a big pond, Chris? William just says. That's probably a little late in the chat, huh, William? Uh, I probably, I probably will not do ponds. Maybe, maybe tubs like outside, but I'm not super into ponds just because like I need, uh, I need the pane of glass. How do you feel about a single blood parrot or single fancy in a 29 gallon tank? Uh, that could work. It, I mean, it's, it's like the saying, it could work. Do you want, do you want to do it? Because like, you're going to be, it's going to be more work. It's going to be, uh, the water changes are going to be more excessive. Would I, would I do it? Probably short term. If you're moving tanks or thinking about upgrading, 
I don't know. Does anyone have plans on their tanks for this upcoming year? That's a great thing to bring up, Lisa. That's cool. You guys should uh, tell me about, there should be like a fish keeping New Year's resolution. And I think that'd be a cool, really cool live stream. So my two Oscars laid eggs. Any tips? They're due tomorrow. <laughs> They're due tomorrow. <laughs> wow, the chat just jumped on me. I apologize. I got to find that. I also have two large Pakus and two large Plecos. How long do you think the babies in there? If you have large Plecos in that tank, they're not, those eggs aren't going to last because the Plecos are going to get their hands on them in the middle of the night when the Oscars can't see them. So my resolution is a 300 gallon this year. Yep, you gotta shoot big, William. All right, Dope Aquarium says tubs are dope. <laughs> That's ironic. Your screen name is Dope Aquariums and you say tubs are dope. Yeah, I like seeing the fish. Heather says, I'm upgrading my 30 gallon to a 60 gallon. If I use uh, AquaClear 30 for my 30 gallon and a couple sponge filters, will that be enough filtration in my 60? All right, so you're gonna have an AquaClear 30 and some sponge filters. Yeah, that should be fine. I would highly advise, uh, if you're gonna buy sponge filters, get, I'll, um, I'll hit up my videos on sponge filters and get the Hydra sponge filters that are 80 gallons and above because they're a more porous sponge filter and they're going to be more powerful on the biological side because you're not going to, um, the, these are more or less to polish uh, like mechanical particulates, but if you get the more porous sponge filters, they, they're more powerful on the biological side. All right. Palmer Aquatics, I have a 56 gallon column tank that I drilled and made a reef tank eight years ago, but I'm gonna drain it and make it a freshwater tank. What would you keep in there? A 56 gallon column tank, big fish types. You're looking for big fish, 56 gallon tank. I would say um, I get some blood parrots. They're pretty slow growers. I would get some black convicts to kind of like even out aggression. I would also, oh, it sounds like my daughter's right outside the door. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, I don't even remember what question I was answering. All right, let's hit the chat here. Alberto says, I have river rocks blasted with light and crazy algae growth all over them. I swear it's made my water better. Yes, algae, a lot of people hate algae, but it's feeding on nitrates and it's helping your water parameters essentially. So it's, 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 it's a double-edged sword. It looks disgusting. I personally don't mind it unless it's on that front pane of glass or if it's on that back pane of glass and it just looks kind of spotty and nasty. I'm not a fan of that. So that would look amazing. All right, guys, I hope to get my hands on a 1,000 gallon pond this year. Maybe build a plywood aquarium, says the, rights, the side of right. The side of right, that's such a weird screen name. All right, let's see here, Lisa's Aquatics. Comments at Lisa's Fishbowl. I'm getting my coral on Thursday. Pretty stoked. Lisa, you gotta put out you gotta put out some more vids, man. I'm turning one of my reef tanks into a Shelly tank. Yes, I'm dope aquarium. I'm glad you brought that up. I want to do I either want to do a planet tank or a Shelly tank again. And Shelly's I absolutely adore. Lisa's asking dope aquariums, how many tanks do you have? Ethan says, Parrot, a pair could work, but I think a six footer would be more suitable. That's true. Um, it would probably work and maybe plan on upgrading in like a year or two. It really depends how fast your blood parrots grow. Uh, you, to be completely honest, you can't put a big fish in a 50, 56 gallon tank. Um, you could maybe do like one or two. Uh, Jack Dempsey's are also pretty slow growers. That's what I would probably put in that tank. A couple of Jack Dempsey's, maybe a blood parrot, and, and cross your fingers, it works. Get a lot of hiding spots. It's, uh, uh, that, that would probably be the coolest tank for me. But I've had some complaints on setting up tanks for friends recently, and I bring, and some of them I bring them free fish because my fish breed and I just bring them to them. And uh, some of them have been complaining that I'm, I'm only putting like, they complain that they can't have more fish together you know they want to do less maintenance on their tanks so i'm like okay well we got to put tougher fish in here you know cichlids tougher fish and it's a complaint that they can't have more fish in a colorful tank and i'm like well you have to choose 
Uh, if you want a tank full of rainbows and more beautiful community fish, you're probably gonna have to do a little more maintenance than you're doing right now because, um, you know, a water change once every two months just isn't cutting it. And those fish are less hardier. I don't know, that's, this, this, it comes and goes, you know what I mean, with what people say. The test kit came up with zero ppm ammonia. How about your nitrates, aqua balls? Jack English says, I'd like to try shell dwellers, but they're pretty expensive. I've seen flower horns the same price. That's super true. Um, shell dwellers are expensive, especially like if you're in a weird spot like me and you just don't, you know, it's really common to see shell dwellers around here for like 20 to 30 bucks each, which is pretty expensive for small fish. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, my wife keeps texting me. I think it's time to eat. I'm going to I'm gonna do a bunch of live streams tonight, so this is not it. You guys should comment. Video is lagging bad, Chris. All right. I, well, I'm ending this anyways, William. So um, my next live stream, I'm going to boot everyone off of Netflix, and uh, I'm going to put the smack down on. Comment in this video, you guys that are still here. I need some topics for the live streams to come tonight. They're probably going to be around the 7 to 8-ish mark, so... All right, guys, this wraps up the live stream on cloudy aquarium water and uh, ways to fix cloudy aquarium water. We talked about that. Just uh, get yourself a test kit just to make sure to fix the cloudy water. That if you're gonna ask, if you're gonna send me questions, which is completely fine, I'll help you. Um, be ready to take some pictures of what, of how cloudy your tank looks because there are different effects. Um, Whatever. I'm going to quit blabbing here. Hit, hit, hit the like button. <sighs> All right, guys.